European Union foreign policy chief Federica Mogherini says that ASEAN and the EU have become closer in trade and said she believed that the future relationship between the two blocs was in a region-to-region -region trade agreement. Ms. Mogherini was speaking at a meeting with ASEAN foreign ministers today in Bangkok. If you think of our security cooperation, what uh, happens, uh, for instance, in the Korean Peninsula that I know is uh, uh, so uh, relevant and pressing for you, or in the South China Sea, matters also so much for us Europeans. We're also closer than ever when it comes to uh, trade and common values with a new generation of free and fair trade agreements. The agreement between the European Union and Singapore is now ratified. We've signed the agreement with Vietnam. And we believe, and I personally strongly believe, that our future lies in a region to region. ASEAN represents the EU's third largest trading partner outside Europe, just after the US and China. The EU is also by far the largest investor in ASEAN countries. Now for more on this, we're joined by Associate Professor Tan Kigyap, Co-Director of Asia Competitiveness at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Thanks for coming in. Always good to have you with us. Now, Europe, clearly they're signaling their interest in when it, and concerns, I suppose, when it comes to security in, on the Korean Peninsula and the South China Sea. Why such a vested interest? I think the European Union's exposure economy-wise to Asia is very big, not just to ASEAN. In fact, the five major European countries alone the GDP size is bigger than China. Mm. So therefore, I think, uh, of course, uh, freedom of passage for South China Sea, uh, security issues in the Korean Peninsula, and streets of Malacca, is of course, a concern. Mm. So I think uh, you shouldn't be surprised. And I expect with the U.S.-China trade friction, Europeans will want to be closer to ASEAN mm. because some of their factories in China, they may move to a certain part of ASEAN. Mm. Kiki up three key words here, free trade agreement, the EU really wanting to cement uh, bilateral trade as Brexit draws to a close. Yes, of course. Even without the Brexit, I think the, uh, the Europeans, especially those multinationals are in China. In fact, I personally involved in one of the very big uh, of movement from uh, foreign multinational in China to Vietnam Industrial Park. Mm. So I think uh, this is going to happen also to to Indonesia and uh, Cambodia, Myanmar, uh, perhaps not Singapore, but I think more and more multinational. If they see this U.S.-China trade friction uh, is, is long term and Europeans, they have big exposure in China, Germany, France. So I think, yes, they will be very interested in this uh, uh, Europe-ASEAN regional free trade agreement. Uh, so whether ASEAN, are we ready? I think that's more important. Uh, that is why Singapore, we should take the lead to help, say, industrial park in Indonesia, industrial park in, in, in Vietnam, even in Myanmar, Irrawaddy Township. I think there's uh, windows of opportunities. If and you're the, talking about helping other Asian countries to develop closer ties to Europe? With Europe, yes. With Europe. So, so that uh, is the foundation where, why European Union, ASEAN Regional Free Trade Agreement is so important. Mm. Okay, and do you think that Europe is opening up to China's Belt and Road Initiative in any way? Uh, we did see certain evidence of that a few months ago with Italy. Yes, and I think, uh, firstly, you must know China market is so big now. Mm. And luxury goods from uh, European countries, I think, uh, they're very keen. Italy is one good example. So it's not just the Belt and Road Initiatives, but I think more so is the Chinese market. Mm. And of course, uh, Eastern European, I just came back from Hungary, you know, uh, they are probably the window to China mm -hmm. uh, in terms of Belt Road within Eastern Europe. So yes, not just Eastern Europe, Western Europe, I think Belt and Road, which is basically infrastructure, mm. whether it's ports or roads or airport, and China can do it cheaper, faster, better. And they need that, except that uh, many European countries are not really sound from the fiscal point of view. Mm. Therefore, they, they need China to purchase aeroplanes, uh, machine equipment. Mm. So I can see that needs from both sides. So if they were to go closer between China and European Union, you shouldn't be surprised mm. that uh, uh, this is part of the globalization between these two economic entities, which have you know, intertwined so closely. Mm. Kiki, all of this progress notwithstanding, do you see 
growing populism as a significant threat. But well, you see, that's the interesting part. How certain government demonize China, and that's how populism is going to start. But, but the business-wise, multinational corporation, China is a very big market. And especially when Europeans, they are having economic difficulties, fiscal constraint, and therefore I think uh, if they were to allow this populism to, to continue on, uh, anti-globalization, anti-China, but at the end of the day, those economies, European economies, I mean referring to whether it's Spain, Italy, Portugal, even France, they can be in big, serious economic problems. And China have the, the, the money to, to purchase some of these heavy machine equipments. So how they can manage the populism, I think, depends on the wisdom of the politicians. Mm. All right, Kiyap, thank you very much for coming into the studios okay. and you. sharing your insight with us on this. Uh, we've been speaking to Associate Professor Tan Kiyap, co-director of Asia Competitiveness at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy.